Hello people, I'm Sagrot and I thought it was uh, way past time for me to make a small tutorial on industrial craft cabling since it has been so long since the last one has been made, at least in my channel. So let's start with the different kinds of cablings you can see I already have on me. And we have essentially five kinds of cables. We can uh, increase that number thanks to the amount of rubber they have but uh, these are essentially the options we were going to use. Now if you're wondering how to get the rubber you will need either to cook one unit of sticky resin inside uh, any kind of cooking system like a standard furnace or an industrial craft one. You can use this tractor to get three from the sticky resin <coughs> or one for the rubber tree sapling <coughs> or you can also get uh, one rubber from the rubber tree wood. So essentially we have this which is thin cable and thin cable is crafted like so. Thin cable is the cheapest of all, can tolerate only up to five energy units per packet and uh, is not insulated. It will also lose only one energy unit per 40 blocks. That means it is extremely uh, useful for making solar flowers if you require so, but uh, essentially you will need some sort of bat box or other buffer system where to collect all the electricity into a more compact cabling or form so you can take it all to your machines once you have, well, essentially more than five or six solar panels placed. Then we have, let me see, can I place it close? Yes, but so no. Then we have the next tier, which would be this, the copper cable. It is usually, I usually skip thin cable altogether because it is not used into anything. Only, well, the illuminator, which is a, a cheap light <coughs> we can have using industrial craft, but it will also use the copper cable. Now, the copper cable, it will be used in several recipes. You can see it's crafted like this, or you can also craft it uh, uninsulated then at the installation. All, all cablings can be crafted like so and it is used essentially into a lot of machines. You can see there are 18 pages of different machinery just to illustrate how useful is the copper cable. Uh, now the copper cable is essentially your uh, standard battle horse. As I said I usually skip altogether the tin cable and go directly for the copper cable and it can only handle up to 32 energy units per tick. However, it will lose uh, more energy units per, per package the longer the distance. About one every 3.33 blocks or if you isolate it with the rubber uh, it will be one energy unit per five blocks. So that means, for example, if there is here some sort of source of ener energy source, up to here we will see there there would be the, the ideal position to make to place another buffer, another bad box or something. And it will it can it cannot handle more than 32 energy units per tick so be careful about that then we have golden cable gold cable can be crafted either uninsulated or isolated essentially like this and it can be made once isolated or twice isolated and you can see the only way of crafting the twice isolated gold cable is uh, this. There's, there is no direct recipe. Well, there is in here this other one. Kinda interesting. Uh, the gold cable can... It's, 
it can handle up to 128 energy units per second. And the energy loss, well, when it's uninsulated, it will lose one energy per two blocks. And when it's twice isolated, it will lose one energy per 2.5 blocks. Meaning, in here we wouldn't have any kind of energy loss, but in here we will have some. And if we go here, we will be losing two energy units per tick. Oh dear. Then we have this. This is the crown jewel. I use it a lot. It's the glass fiber cable. It is used for some stuff and it can and it can be crafted like this. Or if you have red power installed, you can use silver instead and get extra uh, cabling for your diamonds, which is kinda nice. Now it is an extremely useful cable that uh, can tolerate up to 512 energy units per tick. And it will lose the same amount of energy as the glass fiber cable, meaning 40. One energy units per 40 blocks traveler set. Finally, we have uh, this big fella here, which is essentially crafted like this. You can see there are several steps. And let me see if I can. Yeah. With three refined iron, we craft 12 of these. And with enough rubber, we make it four times insulated high voltage cabling. Now, the high voltage cabling is the top level of the, of the chain. It can tolerate 512 energy units and also it can tolerate extreme voltage 2048 energy units per tick per second sorry it has it has an extremely high dis distance related energy loss however uh, essentially the uninsulated version will lose one energy unit per block but the three times insulated one will lose uh, one energy unit per 1.28 blocks ODR. In that case, why use it at all, you might want uh, to ask, since it is almost as bad as the golden one. Well, that's essentially because it can uh, survive up to 2048 energy units per tick per second, which means that essentially you can make a uh, 2000 blocks length ex uh, high, uh, high voltage cable and you will still receive energy units. It's that. It's the only that. Now we have special cablings which are this and this. And let me connect them to something so we can see them completely developed. And how do they work? Well, this in here, we can see it in here, EU detector cable, and his brother, the EU splitter cable. They are crafted like this. <coughs> and their, their purpose is essentially uh, very simple. This one has acts as an on-off switch, and when it receives direct... Uh, redstone power, it will stop allowing energy to go through it. It needs to be uh, direct, however. But you can't place uh, a lever on it, so I suppose you need to use a torch or something. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let me see if I can graph one, and we can test it. Maybe under it? Oh well, yes. There it is. You place it under it. Perfect. And this one uh, won't receive energy, rest on energy. It will emit it when uh, electricity is traveling through it. We'll see it uh, in a while. So now that we have seen all the cablings, we're going to start with the storage systems. We have essentially three of them. The bad box? Mm, sorry, you shouldn't be here. 
ODR. Convenient inventory sometimes is a little whoops. And yes, you can see you shouldn't be doing this manually. There are ways to uh, move and replace this stuff. You should uh, always use um, a branch or it's uh, causing the electric branch. Now, these uh, ones are essentially batteries of uh, variable storage capacity. You can see 40,000 energy units for the bat box, 600,000 for the MFE, and well, 100 million, no, 10 million for the MFSU. And they are crafted like this. Oh, they are. Like this in the case of the bat box with three uh, uh, battery, rechargeable batteries, a copper cable and some wooden planks. It's very cheap. Like these ODR energy crystals, which requires a diamond and eight redstone each, and this one requires four, meaning four diamonds ODR, or the MFSU like this. Six Lapotron, which requires an energy crystal in the middle. So, whoa, fairly expensive. Now, they output energy from this block in here, the one with the dot, and will receive energy from all the other sides. So, if we uh, graph ourselves some cabling, for example, some thin cable, and I'm using this because it's fairly easy to see, from here it will receive power, they will receive power, they will receive power, this will serve of nothing, this will serve of nothing, and but if we if we place them on here we will be outputting energy however considering the characteristics of this uh, cabling it will be destroyed as soon as the battery system starts emitting energy kind of energy remember it can a uh, thin cable can only survive 5 energy units per second while this output 32 128 and 512. This makes them essentially the mates for this different cabling. Like this, more, more or less. But nothing prevents you from using glass fiber cable for all of them. Now, as I told you before, well, I didn't tell you before, but I can tell you now, uh, the, the standard machines can only survive 32 energy units per tick. More than that and they will explode. So how can we go around that limitation? Essentially with the transformers, which are crafted like this in the case of the low voltage one, high voltage one and medium voltage one. This is quite cheap, but the high voltage one requires an energy crystal ODR. Oh, and by the way, you can use the branch to rotate the point, and if you shift click, it will rotate randomly or no to the opposite to where you are clicking. Sorry. If you hit, if you hit shift and right click, and if you uh, use the branch again over the over the front or the button or this side they will drop and you will be able to collect them. Now we have this and this. You can see there are three dots on one side and one dot on the others. Essentially they work like the battery box in that regard. They will receive energy from these sides with one dot and output it from the one with three dots. The, they will output 32 energy units per tick, uh, 128 and 512. Fairly simple, right? But there is a catch. There is always a catch. You can This one can work the other way around. It requires, however, redstone power to be applied. It will then take in uh, energy kind of energy 
it will store it up to 2048 and then emit a package of that amount from here meaning only extreme voltage high voltage sorry cabling will will be useful for that this uh, big fell line here <clears throat> so is this all you might want to ask no it is not there are more stuff going on going on in with the electricity and the like which uh, takes me to the next part of this small tutorial. Let's take for example some copper cable and place it in here. <laughs> if I can somehow place only copper cable oh dear. And you can see it makes uh, some sort of grid because it connects with, uh, with each other. However you might avoid that <clears throat> for whatever reason, you might need to pa to make two different cable systems to pass close to each other or something like that. And see, <clears throat> sorry, how it will connect to golden cable. To this other cable, the high voltage cable. Or glass fiber cable. <coughs> it will also connect to ultra low current cable. However, there is no nothing we can do about that because, well, essentially, I'll explain later. Sin well, I explain it now. Since the ultra low current cable or thin cable is not insulated, you can't use this in here, the painters, to change its color. And you will see right now. How is it useful? Let's go with these ones, which are easy to see, uh, not not the black one. For example, if I paint this here, you can see it gains some nice color. And if I place red in here, you can see they won't connect. I can paint this one, but I can paint this one, so they won't connect. This other one. And this. So if I do this, and for example, this, so we can distinguish them. Them, you can see the only the only cable that is uh, still being able to connect to them is the ultra low one because essentially it is not insulated and it cannot be painted. Now this painting, if you know of red power, works the, in the similar way that uh, taking these brushes and the, the, red, the tubes from red power 2 and painting, and painting them on different colors. So this is essentially it when it comes to, to cabling and storage system and transformers. Now there are different gener uh, power generation stuff on basic industrial craft. We have the humble solar panel crafted like this and coal dust requires you to place uh, coal inside the macerator and they produce one energy unit per tick as long as they are under direct sunlight. So no block but glass can be on top of them, it cannot be raining and it must be day. Uh, during the night they won't work. We have then the water mill which uh, works with essentially water and you, uh, the way it works faster is if you place a bucket of water on the bottom or on the top. I'm not really sure. I've never used them and that you can also place them surrounded by water, but they will produce an even lower amount of water of energy units because of that. They will, however, uh, interact with uh, red power pneumatic tubings and other contraptions, so you can make an automatic system. Then we have the next uh, generator, windmill which is crafted like this, 
with a generator and four ingot, iron ingots and it will generate uh, energy units as long as no other block is around it. Of course you will have some loss as long as you play uh, because you need to place some sort of cabling on the bottom and the higher it, uh, the, block, the windmill is the more energy will it produce. Now these two are more cheaper than the solar panel and will work uh, day or night. However, well, I prefer to not use them because uh, I like solar powers and uh, there was some kind of trouble with the windmills back in the day and they were a little buggy making your game to lag as hell. It should be solved right now, but oh well. The next item we have oh there is this the nuclear reactor. You can surround a nuclear reactor chamber. Can I place this in no. Yes. Oh, and it won't connect. Perfect. So what's this uh, thingy here? A nuclear reactor is essentially what says on the tin. A nuclear reactor. You can surround it by with chambers to expand its uh, capabilities. Mm, let's turn creative for a second. Okay. And you can see here it has a 3 by 6, so 18 slots. But if we go here, we see it has 9 by 6 so 54 slots and here you will place uh, different materials you will <coughs> you will place essentially uh, uranium cells coolant cells and where are these others? Mm, 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 mm. There we go. Reactor plating and heat dispensers. These uh, fellas here do not stack, so be mindful of that. The uranium cell is crafted like, like this. The refined uranium is crafted by placing a um, piece of uranium ore into the compressor, by the way. Uh, the uranium cell, again, is crafted like this with an empty cell. Four pieces of tin give you 16 empty cells. The coolant cell requires a water cell to be placed inside a structure, and the water cell can be crafted like this, or directly filling it uh, from an infinite water source, like if it was a bucket. The integrated reactor plating is crafted like this, and the advanced alloy is crafted with a one mixed metal ingot inside a compressor. You can see three refined iron, three bronze ingots, three tin ingots produce two mixed metal ingots, and the integrated heat dispenser is a combination of the others. Now this uh, should call for some nuclear reactor, some nuclear um, tutorials, but I won't be doing that. Instead, I will tell you the basics. This will dissipate heat, this will storage heat, this will generate heat and electricity, and this will uh, somehow dissipate a slower, uh, lower amount of heat than the integrated heat dispenser, but it will also provide some sort of resistance, extra resistance to the nuclear reactor not really not really used in when you have when you can craft this you will usually go directly for these ones there are several builds and essentially uh, the nuclear reactor will generate uh, la uh, la largest and largest amounts of uh, energy the more uranium cells you place in, in it if you place There we go. If you place your name cells, cells, well, let me delete old. Um, if you place the uranium cells like this, they will only output a small amount of energy 
each one if you place them like this for example however if you do this this in here will produce three times as much er energy than the others and it will last much longer if you fill all these uh, all these layers with uranium cell the reactor will heat a lot faster but will produce more than 2000 energy units per tick easily However, there are ways around that, using a current exchange on red power, for example, to feed ice inside, in, uh, inside of a nuclear reactor. The ice will cool the reactor. Another thing you should know is that uh, applying a resistant current will block the working of the reactor. So you can turn it off and let it uh, cool down. Using these uh, setups, there are ma different marks of reactors. Mark 1s are ultra safe, will never explode, and can run all the way to the depletion of the cells without needing any kind of care. And in fact, you can replace the cells right after they finish with them and start again, and wait, they will never explode. Mark 2 will require some cool cooling time after depleting the, um, the cells inside of them. Mark 3s will require to stop every now and then, and caustic reactors will essentially have all this filled with, well, will have as much as the inside of the reactor chamber filled with, um, with uranium cells and some ice being pumped in by red power 2. However, you will need to sacrifice one of the reactor chambers for that since you can't connect uh, the piping to the reactor chambers as we can see for well well since you can so you you weren't able to oh well better than way and finally there are some add-ons out there that allow you to make other things there's another i am not using that allows you to teleport electricity from one place to another or the one I like more, which involves uh, using Railcraft. The cards, the MFS, MFE cards, MFSU card, etc. They will essentially allow you to move energy using rails and you can of course ignore all these pesky descriptions about uh, energy loss and the like. You can have the nuclear reactor far away, fill the, your batteries in, in, automatically thanks to um, thanks to some kind of system in in here uh, energy unloader and energy loader <coughs> and move the energy using rails. So that's it. I hope uh, it was helpful. Remember, it is important to check if the right voltage is going through the cables before reaching your machines so they won't explode or if inside of the batteries. If you were to output the MFE to a bat box directly, it will explode. Be mindful of that. <coughs> and uh, well, that's Ah, remember, the point is where energy will output and this other side with it's where, ener where energy will input. So that's all for this tutorial. Hope it was helpful and I'll see you around hopefully in my let's play. Goodbye people and remember to have fun!